Welcome to part four of the white LED versus the red blue LED grow test. This is the final video in this four part series. Uh, part one was about the science behind this. Part two was about the first grow test results. And part three was the PAR measurements of these lights using a quantum PAR meter. If you haven't watched those videos and you want to watch them, there will be uh, links in the video description below. Uh, so go ahead and take a look at those if you like. The first two are kind of long, the second one's a lot shorter. And hopefully this video will be shorter too. Uh, in the second, uh, the part two, the first grow test, the lights were at the same height, and uh, the white LED here is a 50 watt chip as well as the red blue, but this one is underdriven, so this one's only pulling 38 watts from the wall, and this one's pulling 50 watts from the wall. So in order to do a, uh, a complete test, you know, a scientific experiment is always about um, doing things more than once, replicating results, and uh, trying it multiple times. So you can't just do one test, so we're doing this next test. And uh, we figured using that graph that I made in part three, that five inches from the red blue light is about 300 micromole, and the same over here at seven and a half inches under the white light. Uh, so that's the only, there's, that's one of the only differences between the first test. The second difference is, is just how they're being grown. Um, I want to get into talking a little bit about what I'm doing here because I'm not doing soil, I'm doing hydroponics. And in soil, your plant is going to grow slower. In hydroponics, it can grow up to twice as fast. And here's the reason why. Um, in soil, when you water it, whatever nutrients you give it or whatever in the soil, when you dump the water in there, within about 15 to you know 30 minutes after, that's when most of the nutrients are being taken up by the plant. Uh, also, when you water a plant, uh, it displaces the the old air in the soil, and when it fil when it filters through, it draws in fresh air, basically like suction in a way. Um, so in hydroponics, you're giving the nutrients continuously because it sits in a nutrient solution. It's just all liquid, and it's constantly being taken up by the plant as if it's just being watered continuously, if you will. Uh, the other thing is the air, so roots hang down into the water and a portion of the roots is actually exposed to the air so it can get oxygen. The, the, the lower parts of the root are actually absorbing the nutrients from, from the solution. And that's what I wanted to talk about here is the, what I'm using here is a mix between the Kratky method and the Kratky method is where you basically just sit it in, uh, sit it in your, your nutrient solution with whatever container you have and you allow the water to level to drop down and then that lets the roots get exposed partially to the air so it can get oxygen so they don't drown. Um, because there's also another method called DWC, which is deep water culture. And in that, the water is, uh, well, the roots are actually completely submersed in the water and you have an aeration, uh, in like an air stone, aerating the water continuously so they can basically breathe, get oxygen. This method here, I combined the DWC and Kraki method together because um, giving it more air is just better. Also, if, my, if I have a power outage and I lose power, the, uh, the pump here, that's, it's actually off right now, otherwise it would be too loud to talk, um, but it's a commercial air pump. That needs to continuously give it bubbles for it to, for it to breathe, but it can breathe without it because uh, I'm letting the water level drop down as you would in the cracky method and let it stay low. Uh, I'm never going to fill it up to where the roots are all completely completely submerged in that. So anyways, that's what I'm doing with hydroponics. And uh, I figured that this time I want to get the plants growing quicker than the last time because it was two and a half months. These plants here, these have been cut. These are actually clones, genetic clones from the plants I used in the second video. And these were cut about three weeks ago. And it took them about to, a week to root. And what you're seeing now is actually about double, triple size, uh, or just over the past two weeks. And it took about, a, I believe, a month before uh, when I did the soil and the seeds before they actually got to this height and looked like this. So it's already well off. Um, I also arranged them in a way that, uh, because some of them didn't root as quickly as the others, um, so they're a little bit behind. So each container has basically a small, medium, and large plant. There's four total, but there's kind of like two small in each one. 
and uh, there's they're just sitting in net pots and there is uh, lake of clay pebbles or hydrogen whatever you want to call it it's either either name really um, these are actually painted black containers too um, I couldn't find a, a, the size container that would fit in here that was basically a solid color like black so you couldn't see through it so these were clear I painted them and I put like a little uh, <coughs> excuse me a little water level indicator right down here so that way I know when to add more, uh, more solution uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, the only other thing I would say here is, is the nutrients I'm giving them. Uh, just for reference, if you guys want to know, uh, I'm using the General Hydroponics uh, Trio. And I'm using, that's the Flora Grow, that's the Flora Micro, and the Flora Bloom. And I also am adding CalMag to it because uh, fruiting plants generally need a little bit more calcium to grow, at least the fruit anyways. Uh, I also am adding Epsom salt and they're all mixed one to one ratio it's a general feeding and the Epsom salt is about 50% of the rest so it's basically like one teaspoon of each and then a half teaspoon of Epsom salt uh, so that's the that's the grow test going on here and hopefully it shouldn't take too much longer I'm hoping within the next month here I'll have this all complete and you'll see me in about two seconds at that time so here we are, two seconds later. Okay, it's actually two weeks later. That's still pretty amazing though. This is just two weeks since I recorded the first part of this video. And at that time, they were only about this tall. That was it, as you've seen in the video. If you couldn't see it, it's probably because the camera wasn't uh, adjusted for the exposure, but this is, that's how tall they were. Um, growing in hydroponics was just a very different experience for me. This is the first time doing this in hydroponic setup versus soil. I mean, there were so many good things about doing hydroponics versus soil because there, there's two things actually I'd like to note. One is you don't have to worry about fungal gnats as much because there's no soil. They can't lay their eggs in anything. Uh, there Maybe there's some bugs flying around it, but they're well under control. Maybe one or two fungal gnats compared to like hundreds. So that's one good thing. The other good thing is not having to worry about watering it. Now, yes, you do have to add water to it as they start absorbing it, um, but they're sitting in so much of the water already. There's, uh, I believe, about two gallons in each container, roughly. Uh, that's that's a lot, and it as the plants grow bigger, it does absorb it quicker. However, if it's in soil in a pot, you're watering it every day, every other day, usually, depending on the plant and the size and all that. But this, this here was great because I didn't have to worry about underwatering it or overwatering it. These plants here, for the most part, look very healthy. And if you're looking at the leaves and the stems and all that, really just amazing because there's no signs of uh, real nutrient deficiencies and no nutrient burn. Those, those, those are two things that would happen in soil because you can't control how well it is going to absorb what you're putting in there in the soil. That's all dependent on how, how good the root growth is. Um, so you don't know if they're going to be absor absorbing too much of it or too little. You can, you can play with the, you know, the mixture of your nutrients and all that, but in hydro, as long as you follow what's on the bottle, um, you know exactly what you're putting in that water and you know exactly what they're going to be absorbing. So there's just really no way to, to screw it up. Um, Unless, of course, you go overboard and add just a little bit too much because just even a half a teaspoon is actually a lot. So there, you do have to be careful with how much you're putting in there because it is very sensitive. Um, so anyways, let's get into talking about the, the plants here. And I pulled these out. I actually recorded the first part, or I, I tried recording this uh, a few minutes ago and I realized I did not turn my microphone on. So I already had these pulled out. I was going to do it in front of my grow box, but um, I'm just going to say that these here on this side, these were grown under the red-blue LED, and these were grown under the white LED. The same exact result we saw in the soil. And this was given the optimum conditions uh, as far as the, the ability to grow with, you know, with the proper amount of nutrients and everything. Identical. Uh, there, there was the same solution given both containers. And um, the other thing was is the lights we adjusted. The red-blue LED was closer to the plants than the white LED. We adjusted that with the PAR meter. Uh, so we saw at, uh, at the same distance from the light, it was the same PAR output or very, very close. As close as we can get it because it does fluctuate under each light. If, even if you move that sensor, even just a hair, 
even a quarter of an inch that makes a big difference in the what you see in that number it will jump up and down so we can only get it close we're not going to get it perfect because it LED lights actually a lot of times even if it's sitting in one particular spot and you're not moving it, if it's stationary the sensor for the power meter it's going to uh, it's still going to jump on the numbers a little bit that's just the nature of the lighting um, so what happened with the plants well uh, I can tell you what happened with the plants the plants under the red blue light they actually grew up and they were actually slightly taller than the ones on the white light so these were actually closer to the plants getting more light than the ones on the, under the white LED. And that was uh, one thing that was, uh, I was actually kind of worried because I, I thought that, I thought that, well, these are gonna, you know, the red-blue LED plants, these were gonna get more light and they're gonna win out. But you know what happened? These were reaching. And you, we can measure the distance um, between the, the nodes and it was about an, roughly an inch and a half on average uh, more spacing under the red-blue LED with these plants than the white LED. And these were, um, about the same as the first experiment in part two, as far as the, the node spacing. Um, they were, and you know, this is all to be expected because um, blue light uh, and some green light prevents reaching on the plants. That's what suppresses vertical growth. Um, and under the red dominant light, so you know, it's red and blue, but most is more red diodes than blue diodes, uh, we would come to expect that, especially with how fast it grew, we would come to expect reaching because there's not enough blue light in there in the blue spectrum to suppress the vertical growth. That's not why they collapsed though, it wasn't because they grew too fast and all that. It's in the first experiment where it took two and a half months, um, they had plenty of time to strengthen up their stems and it never happened. This experiment, total since the plants were cut uh, it was it's, this is one month almost exactly one month since they were cut and they're only about this tall when I cut them and this is how fast they grew so as you can see like I said in hydro plants can grow up to twice as fast and uh, it, it really proved it in this experiment so we proved two things actually so what this experiment shows me is is white LED still wins out over the red blue even when the light is even when the light is is consistent with the amount of uh, uh, the micromole output of a light for each plant, for each set of plants. Uh, anyways, the, the last thing I wanted to mention was the uh, uh, the fruiting uh, because in part two we did we let the plants fruit. They flowered and they put out a little bit of fruit. It was a, it was a nine cherry tomatoes each um, and. Overall, under the red blue light, the cherry tomatoes were slightly smaller, but it was it, it's such a small sample size that we really can't look at that. I, but they were, on average, slightly smaller than what we saw that with the plants under the white LED. Um, to be consistent with the first experiment, we're not going to take these into fruit mode. Uh, I did not give them uh, the the proper mixture of nutrients to do that, anyways. I could have switched them over, but. Uh, ultimately, there's no reason to do that because if we did do that, obviously the ones under the white light are going to win because look how tall they are, closer to the light. These here, they can't even get any vertical growth. There's just no way to compare that. So to be consistent, we're not going to we're not going to do fruiting. And really, this whole thing was about just kind of showing what happens between the two plants under the two different light sources. This is what happens. We can't look at every single aspect of it. Uh, I know some of you out there probably want to do, you know, better experiments and all this, but this this is not about comparing the lights that you get. As I said in, in the other videos, it's not about comparing the lights you get where you have, you know, that perfect spectrum and it's still like a pink purple light with the other little colors in there as well. This is just about red and blue light because the whole concept was um, if it's actually your plants can grow just fine with just giving them the light that they need, which is just red and blue light. And in this case, yeah, they grew. But the biggest problem with that is this is what happens when you just give them those two uh, wavelengths of light. Because in LED, it was just those two wavelengths. That was it. Just those, I, I can't tell you offhand the nanometer range, but it was just those two. Under white light, you get a full broadband spectrum. So you're getting a full spectrum light, and it's just going to grow better. That's just how it's going to happen. Um, now, I, I didn't grow this. I didn't do this experiment because I knew what was going to happen and I wanted to prove it to you guys out there. I did this experiment because I do these experiments and I like to do them. I don't do the videos to prove anything. I do the videos just to show my results. Um, I'm going to continue to do, to do experiments like this, but 
I do the videos just because I like to share the information, that's it. Uh, so by no means am I trying to prove one light's going to work better over another with different manufacturers and all that. I'm not saying that they don't work or do work. This was just about one single experiment under the two light spectrums versus white light and uh, the two, white, uh, two wavelengths of light, red and blue, or versus the white light. Uh, so I'm sorry if some of you out there may not be happy with these results and you think I didn't show enough, but let's go ahead and show what the roots look like because that's one thing that we did not show in the soil experiment because it's almost impossible to do that. These roots have had every chance to grow as, as well as they could under this, in the same nutrient solution. So we're going to look at that right now. Let's pull up my phone here and we'll just do a second camera. Let's take a look at what the roots look like under the red and blue light. And I think you'll be pretty surprised with this. Red, blue. Look at the roots. Now what you're looking at, the, the bottom part of the container is not, uh, it's not painted, so you're, just, you're looking at the countertop. That's not like a big mesh of roots. What you're seeing here, just this stuff hanging down, that's it. That's all the roots there is. Now let's look over and look at the white light LED. Now remember, these plants were getting actually less light measured with the PAR meter since these were uh, actually further away from the light to start with. But let's take a look at the roots here. Look at the difference in root growth. It is a lot more roots here. There is a lot more and um, they also look pretty healthy. And these are heavy, like I'm picking this up, I can feel the weight of this to where the other one under the red blue light, um, it really wasn't, really wasn't heavy at all. I barely even could tell they were there. So anyways, that finishes up the video. Uh, it was probably a little longer than I wanted it to be, but um, I was just, I'm just trying to cover everything that I possibly can and try to explain things out. Um, so I'm sorry if it's longer than I uh, anticipated and maybe that you hoped for, but that's it. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I will continue to do experiments like these and I'll post videos. Uh, however, that, comp that concludes this experiment where we're comparing two different types of lighting. So thanks for watching the video and maybe we'll see you in the next one.